StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. First up, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year because that will be the last startup news recording of this year don't worry there will be more and we will have a few more episodes for you coming this year until um december 22nd then there's the last interview december 25th there is the last uh fintech review this year as always on december 25th and then in the next year we are starting with our usual publication schedule on thursdays that said welcome to this month in German startups, December 2020. This is the Christmas edition. And of course, Chris is here from New York. How are you doing, man? It's so sad how often we tried this joke. <laughs> but yeah, hello, I'm good. I'm not ready for Christmas yet. Still a lot to do. 10 days to go, nine days to go. Yes, exactly. But uh, the upside is we do this. We get to do this joke only once uh, a year during the December news. So everybody can just skip this. Welcome to this month in German startups by StartupRate.io in a transatlantic news recording with Chris in New York. Today we are wrapping up December 2020 for you. Please keep in mind that due to the holidays and the current lockdown in Germany, we are recording these news on December 15th. All news not included here will be part of our January wrap up and there will be a special episode 2020 review 2021 outlook as well. Last time the outlooks have been uh, totally off. Let's see how it goes this year. Today we're bringing you news about the 10 billion investment package of the German government, the new DAX, which is the German Dow Jones, Peter Thiel's investments in Germany, taxes, AI and much more. Enable this reco- this recording was made possible by Hessen Trade and Invest. Learn more about our enabler at www.invest-hessen.com. Housekeeping. Time to brag. We have only one thing to say. Stay safe, everybody. Be grateful for what you have. Let's get to the top news. 10 billion euros. 12.1 billion US dollars. This is the sum the German federal government wants to invest in addition to all other measures in the German startup scene in 2021 as a kind of kickoff to encourage private investments as well. Some articles here, uh, there's a German one, the German government wants to invest 20, uh, 10 billion euros in German startups 20, 2021 directly and indirectly, and a more critical few from Sifted include statements from Christian Miele, head of Germany's startup association. DAX, Deutscher Aktien Index, German Stock Index, Germany's most important share index. Um, there's a question, trouble for HelloFresh, German share price index, DAX, will be completely overhauled. It will be expanded from now, 30, to future 40 and all companies should be profitable. Uh, Changes will take effect in September 2021. So it's not just around the corner. We already shared the news that DAX will be overhauled and extended. Hot candidates for the expansion are companies like Zalando, Scout24, TeamViewer and maybe HelloFresh. Then there's a question back to normal in 2024. Flightright is one of the startups buying up compensation claims for delayed flights under the European Union rules. They expect commercial flights to be back to normal only in 2024. What is your opinion? How do you plan to recover? Feel free to give us feedback in opinion in our Google Forms. Of course, there's a link down below and please include your geography so we can kind of assemble this. Christian, I do believe you also have some interesting news. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, just um, adding to this, I think, A, uh, it is pretty interesting how the German uh, government actually was able to uh, come up with 
packages uh, and and uh, um, support for Germans as a whole through a Kurzarbeit, where basically German government stepped in and paid people's wages during the pandemic, but also was not completely forgetting freelancers, startups, which are usually structures that don't necessarily benefit from governmental um, stimulus packages. And so, for example, we see it here in the United States that it takes forever. It's become very political, but people are not being helped. So yay for this in, in terms of um, German support. And I mean, just to the ducks, uh, in case people don't know what TeamViewer is, it's basically the app that um, makes your family get along <laughs> um, because uh, it is probably the single best thing that you can use if you want to um, IT support your parents. So definitely also a holiday recommendation for us because it allows for remote control of uh, computers and for coming up with updates or for checking out whatever it is that is wrong with their computers. And um, third thing to the idea that everything goes back to normal in 2024, I mean, at this point, I just guess it's anyone's guess. And who knows, you know, probably we are looking at um, a much faster vaccine distribution. Um, and we are probably looking at things being back to normal at the end of 2021. There's also this idea that probably we are going back to another roaring 20s, just like 100 years ago when with the Spanish flu, everyone was back and, and um, celebrating. So we'll see. Anyway, my two Fenige. And um, moving on to N26, which we had a, a, in our show a couple of times, and it's a German um, bank trying to do things in a very new way. And it is probably one of the bigger German uh, startup success stories in banking. Um, right now, though, only 20% of their client base are paying customers. So N26 shifts strategy for their current accounts, focusing on the premium account N26 Smart, um, clients have to pay for. So for banks, having the current account um, is considered the basis to sell other more valuable services, for example, asset management, credits, etc., to the clients. And N26 basically just goes down the same route. Even though, I mean, we've seen in banking over the last couple of years all over the place that um, fees went up really, really high. And because there's not much money to be made with credits. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty tough business. And the same goes... For Wirecard, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Same goes for Wirecard, um, which we also a couple of times explained um, is probably one of the biggest um, startup financial scandals of the past uh, couple of years, if not decades. Basically, they had assets in their books which didn't really exist, or at least this is um, this is the claim. Um, then. CEO disappeared. And to keep you updated, we have a small selection of the news of the past couple of weeks. So um, it became a bit quieter around the insolvency. Um, we are sure that news might pick up there on that front in 2021 a bit more. But um, there's still an investigative committee ongoing in the German parliament. Um, one where uh, so far the company has remained pretty quiet. But Deutsche Bank accounting head stands aside in Wirecard scandal. He was formerly in charge of auditing Wirecard at uh, EY. Then there is uh, the German finance supervisor Bafin, which uh, let go several employees due to their Wirecard share dealings when they were supposed to oversee the company. So there is also another thread going on there. And... Um, the uh, uh, APAS in Germany, the supervisor of auditors, um, was part of the news because their Spiegel, an investigative news magazine, reported their head was dealing also in Wirecard shares shortly before the insolvency became public. He is now on leave. So a lot of open threads there going on. Which lets us move on to the ecosystem. Uh, first off, first topic we're covering is AI, artificial intelligence, um, 
where we found reports basically saying that Europe is catching up with the United States and China as now all sides blow money into the AI arms race. Um, experts say a couple of more information about that in our show notes. Talking AI, it still has a lot to learn, though. Um, we have something about that as well. And let let me get into this uh, something about to learn because we're using for the automated transcript where people can read on our blog post the content. Uh, we need we use Google Cloud and they really made us laugh hard. Um, for our startup rate .io, the automatic translation came up with star ball room dance studio dot com. That that was quite a far fetch, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's not just us mumbling, but I think we're also <laughs> tough for the AI. Uh, then moving on to taxes, another tough topic. So taxes, as in things you need to pay to the government, not the state. Um, we don't want to scare you here because there's good news this time. Then, uh, because there's a better tax treatment for employee share ownership now in Germany, and it should come into force on July 1st, 2021. <laughs> There's also an award going on in Germany, the Deutsche Zukunftspreis 2020, so German Future Award 2020, which goes to a team that uses extreme ultraviolet light to build extreme fine structures in microelectronic components. Um, more about that in our show notes as well. Back to you. Thank you very much, Chris. That that really make, it made me laugh. We're not only mumbling. <laughs> Let's try to avoid a little bit. <laughs> Chris, discipline, please. Okay, other people cannot see you right now. Hops. Note, the order of the news and cities is only due to the time we discovered the news rather than anything else. Frankfurt, just two news. German finance magazine Capital chose their 40 under 40 and Gunjan, uh, the founder of Inoplex, was one of them. Congratulations. Of course, we highlight this here because you can learn more about this inspiring entrepreneur in our interviews. There are two of them with him. And Frankfurt-based fintech Solactive raises 50 million euros venture capital. Let's go a little bit to the south, to Munich. Munich-based luxury online fashion retailer My Teresa is planning to IPO valued 1.5 billion, yes, billion with a B, on New York Stock Exchange. That's quite exciting. Chris, you got something else there? Yeah, a different city uh, from the south of Munich back to the north in Hamburg, where um, which is the headquarter of uh, Sanity Group, a cannabis venture in Hamburg, which raised 4.8 million US dollars from Black Eyed Peas frontman Will I Am. Uh, US actress Alyssa Milano and German soccer player Mario Götze Uh, plus model Stephanie Giesinger, along with Bitburger Ventures. Moving on to an even smaller city, Bielefeld, where we find the software as a service startup Value Desk. They raised 3.2 million euros in venture capital to help companies optimize internal spending. Bochum, um, a, a I would say mid-sized town in uh, to the west of Bielefeld. Um, there we have the anti-malware startup VM Ray. They got an even bigger contract and raised 20 million euros in venture capital. Augsburg in the south, Bavaria, um, is hosting or home of the robotics startup German Bionic. They also raised 20 million in 20 million US dollars in venture capital. Funding. We leave Germany, move on to Austria. It is not the sum, it is their product which is interesting here. An Anovon A Metsubs, Anovona. Do you know this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if the company listens, but also probably we are not the only ones with these issues. Anovona Metsubs is an Austria based startup producing protein to help a human body recover its own protein production. Founded by four doctors, they now raised 200,000 euro in funding. So yeah, for gym rats like you and I, 
good news, I would say. And in Switzerland, we see seed investment for the Swiss-based Internet of Things startup Infrasense, 500,000 Swiss francs, which equals around $560,000. Then um, we have a list of fintech startup accelerators and incubators in Europe coming from fintech Switzerland, including the Frankfurt-based accelerator Frankfurt, um, which who we interviewed, I think, or I mean, we didn't interview the accelerator, but co-founder. Maria, you did. I did exactly, and I was uh, just just uh, smiling again with the with those names. I do believe the easy names are out. Um, uh, Maria, by the way, is a very interesting lady. She's a, a very early a business angel investor of some of very well-known uh, fintech startups in Germany, including, for example, Solaris, Bank, and Clark. Yeah, regarding names, just one little thing. Um, here in the US, even though it's the German company, everyone, I mean, is talking about them because they came up with the vaccine together with Pfizer. Um, in Germany, we say BioNTech, but here everyone says BioNTech. And I'm pretty sure that BioNTech actually is the correct one because I guess it comes from biology and technology. So anyway, and we also have Moderna there. I mean, nothing mysterious about the name there, except the only thing is Moderna comes from modified RNA. Boom. Awesome. I'm just blown away, Chris, my man. Talking now a little bit about companies crypto challenger bank bitwala the berlin-based crypto challenger bank bitwala raises 50 million euros venture capital of course you can learn more about the founder in our interview with him buying up amazon shops yes that's a thing before the hype really starts in germany trasio sorry about the name declares to invest 20 225 million US dollar to buy up German Amazon shops, maybe to scare away the clones. Talking about crowdfunding and crowd lending, especially default, Exporo is a German real estate crowdfunding website. They have 106 projects currently in the portfolio, but 16 of them are already overdue with payments. We expect more news like this until at least the end of 2021. Peter Thiel. Yes, he was born in Germany, but we are talking about his investments in Germany right now. Uh, he backed a Berlin-based star uh, startup making psychedelics in a $125 million round and Neo Digital, German billionaire Carsten Maschmeyer already invested. Now Peter Thiel follow with an investment in this intro tech startup. And I do believe it's always Chris job uh, to end on a high note, right? Definitely. And in this case, even for the whole year or so, um, we hope you can use the time in the upcoming quieter days to come up with some strategic realignment, or probably you can turn your company and startup idea into something that attracts money. And if you need money, we found two new funds that are giving out venture capital. For example, we have the Berlin-based Cavalry Ventures. They raised their second fund this year, 20 million euros for follow-up or later stage investments. And we have the also Berlin-based Target Global, which raised 300 million euros for a new growth fund. They are looking for early growth startups who have the potential to generate revenues early on. Chris? It's always amazing how you can end on such a high note. Thank you very much. It was once again a pleasure working together with you for a whole year. We will be doing a strategic realignment uh, also during the holidays. And we'll be back with uh, some news, interviews and live events, of course, in 2021. And I do believe at least 10 news episodes again next year. Really looking forward to it. Also looking forward. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you very much and goodbye. That's all, folks. Find more news.
news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.